Hi again, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk more in detail about the structural classification of joints. By the end of this video, I'd like you to define a fibrous joint and differentiate its subtypes, define a cartilaginous joint and differentiate the subtypes of that, and define a synovial joint. Now this is just a reminder slide, what you saw in the last one, and these are those three categories based on the tissue that holds them together. So fibrous with fibrous tissue, cartilaginous with cartilage, and synovial with that fluid-filled joint capsule. Now fibrous connective tissue connects the bones of a fibrous joint. So there is significant variability in the mobility of these types of joints, depending on the organization of the connective tissues. So the amount or the length of connective tissue can affect that joint functioning. But the three subtypes are a suture, gomphosis, and a syndesmosis. We're going to talk about each one individually. So we'll start with the suture, which is specific to the skull. Now we can see here in this illustration that sutural ligaments are the ones binding these bones together. Now in infants and juveniles, these joints, sutures, remain slightly movable, allowing for growth and accommodating the birth canal. Now in an adult, the joint is fully immobile. And the interconnecting bony parts, we can see kind of this interdigitating um, between the two bones really keeps that mobility down. Another fibrous joint is a gomphosis, and this joint is specific to teeth. So let's pause for a moment and think about, are teeth made of bone tissue? So the answer is no. Teeth have sim similar mineralization to bones, but the structure is different. So let's get back to this joint. Now teeth form these joints with the maxilla, in the mandible. This is my crude drawing here, but here's the mandible, which is that lower jaw, and then the upper jaw is the maxilla. So the joint is formed between tooth and bone, and it's held down by these periodontal ligaments. We can see those represented in this image here. So some movement is maintained. It's not as closely bound as we saw with the suture. Now our last type of fibrous joint, a syndesmosis, is the most mobile of these fibrous joints. Now the bones aren't close together. We can see the edges of the radius and the ulna here. So this much space is found in between these two bones. And this space is filled with what's called an interosseous membrane. Now we can break this word down to between bone. So we find interosseous membranes between the bones of our forearm. We also see them in the bone between the bones of our legs. And in the forearm, we get a lot of mobility. If you flip your palms toward the floor and back up toward the ceiling, that is a movement between these two bones through this joint. Now bones in a cartilaginous joint are joined by cartilage. Synchondroses, which are primary or more temporary, are bound by hyaline cartilage, whereas a symphysis, which is secondary or more permanent typically, are bound by fibrocartilage. And if we want to break this word down, we can find cond, and that refers here to cartilage. Now in a synchondrosis, we see that the type of cartilage binding bones together is hyaline cartilage. And a great example of this is an epiphyseal plate, where that layer of hyaline cartilage is found between the epiphysis here and the remainder of the bone leading toward that diaphysis. And there's very limited movement available at these synchondroses, but this is an example where we see 
growth happening at a joint. So rather than movement, we're talking here about growth. Now in a symphysis, the articular surfaces of the bone maintain their hyaline cartilage, as we've seen previously, but then in between them, we see the binding cartilage, which here is fibrocartilage. So that important part here is that it's fibrocartilage binding these together. And we find these symphyses typically right along the midline. So the intervertebral discs of the back, as well as the pubic symphysis um, in the pelvic girdle. So with development and age, some joints ossify. And these ossified joints are called synostosis. You can find again that word or that those letters OS referring here to bone. So what is happening here is bone is holding together bone and there aren't fibrous or cartilaginous structures holding them together. So one example here are those epiphyseal plates. As they close or ossify, they change from a synchondrosis, which is that cartilaginous joint, to a synostosis, leaving that line. Sutures also may ossify with age. So we can see in this person here, is a suture that many of us do not have, especially at, an, at a more advanced age. And here, this once was a suture, but we can see that those bones have fully fused together, so that's known as a synostosis. And one more time, when an epiphyseal plate ossifies, what type of ossification is that? That's endochondral ossification. Great. So finally, synovial joints are joined by a fibrous capsule that encloses a cavity. You can imagine these two bones come together. So in a fibrous joint, we saw fibrous tissue connecting them. In a cartilaginous joint, we saw cartilage binding those together. And what we see here of a synovial joint is that it's bound here by some fibrous tissue holding it together, but then this space remains open and full of fluid. So we're gonna talk a lot about synovial joints. And why do you think we spend so much time talking about them? So they're the most numerous in the body and they're also the most mobile, so more prone to injury. So let's move on to our question. So the first rib and the sternum are joined by hyaline cartilage. Now, what type of joint is this based on that description? So go ahead and pause it, choose your answer, and maybe try to write down anything you remember about the other options. So the sternum also known as the breastplate, runs right down the middle of our chest. That's something you can palpate right on yourself. Now, about this point here is where it will join with the first rib. And that first rib here is connected by hyaline cartilage. So what type of joint is bound together by hyaline cartilage? So the correct answer here is the synchondrosis. So these are bound by hyaline cartilage. So cartilaginous joints. What was our other type of cartilag cartilaginous joint? So that is a symphysis. And now what type of cartilage bound bones together at a symphysis? That is fibrocartilage. All right, so let's look at our remaining joints. What type of joint is a gomphosis? So is it a fibrous joint, a cartilaginous joint, or synovial joint? This is fibrous. And where are we looking at here? What part of the body? Teeth. How about a suture? This is also going to be fibrous. And where do we find sutures? In the skull. 
Now, how about a syndesmosis? What type of joint is that? That will also be fibrous. And where do we find these? Between bones of our forearm and between the bones of our leg. And these are typically interosseous between bone membranes. Now, what was this last one again? A synostosis? So synostosis is a bony joint. Now, I just want to note that in, in the slides, we did talk about the synchondroses as being more temporary. And what we see here is a, an exception to this rule. And this joint here between the first rib and the sternum is permanent. So it's not a hard and fast rule that you have primary, secondary, temporary, permanent. Um, but what we do see here is, again, always looking back to what type of tissue is joining those bones. So thanks for joining me in this video. I will see you in the next one.